Uh, and then I'll uh, like, use the concise notation uh, so just to show you what it looks like so 1 plus uh, q over 1 minus q uh, q to the 4 over 1 minus q times 1 minus q square uh, plus uh, q to the 9 over 1 minus q 1 minus q square 1 minus q cube so I think now you get uh, the pattern and this goes on and this is equal to a nice product um, so what is this product so uh, it's it's again like a uh, two products so let me just yeah so uh, this is one over one minus q times one minus q to the six times one minus q to the eleven and so on uh, multiplied by another product which is one minus q to the four uh, one minus q to the nine 1 minus q to the 13 sorry 14 and so on so i think the pattern is clear uh, uh, so if i write it in more concise notation uh, this will be uh, sum q to the n square divided by uh, this product 1 minus q to the n okay and this n goes from uh, equal to 1 uh, in this case um right so anyway so uh, and this product will be so i'm i'm not writing the indices because I, I i think you can figure out what these are so this will be like sort of informal uh, so i'm not going to focus on too much about these indices anyway so just to show you how the product looks like so this will be 1 minus q to the um sorry what did i yeah 1 minus q to the 5i plus 1 times 1 minus q to the uh, 5i plus 4 and now this uh, this product will be from i equal to uh, zero okay so infinity anyway so this is the first roger samanujan identity and the second roger samanujan identity is similar now instead of n square we'll have n square plus n so let me write it down uh, in full details so this is one plus q square divided by one minus q plus uh, q to the six which is uh, four plus two divided by 1 minus q times 1 minus q square and so on uh, and this is now equal to a different product so uh, again this is related to uh, the residue classes mod 5 uh, instead of uh, mod 1 and 4 like we saw, saw in the earlier case it will be now 1 minus q to the uh, 5i plus 2 times 1 minus q to the 5i plus 3 okay so what is remarkable about these identities is that you'll see that uh, on one side you have an infinite sum and on the other side you have an infinite product and uh, this is quite remarkable and this makes these identities uh, quite unexpected when you first see them uh, but uh, later on it was discovered that these are just two of a like a long list of identities of similar type where on the one side you have a sum and on the other side you have a product uh, now, uh, there are some things which needs to be said about infinite sums and infinite products. Um, so you, you all are familiar with uh, finite geometric series or finite uh, sums and finite products. Uh, so, but when you think about infinite products in this sense, then uh, there are two ways of thinking them. So uh, one way is to think of them uh, as uh, the limiting values of uh, some finite sums or finite products when you take the limit uh, of the ind index as it goes to infinity. And the other way, which I prefer and which I'll be going to use in this talk, is the formal approach, uh, where you think of them as infinite degree polynomials. Okay, um, so you can see that I have not given any uh, um, convergence criteria in, in any of these uh, identities. That's because I tried I as infinite uh, polynomials. Now uh, you know that uh, two polynomials are equal if if uh, coefficient wise they're equal so the same thing holds for infinite degree polynomials so two infinite degree polynomials will be equal if coefficient wise uh, they are equal so if their coefficients are equal uh, for all uh, uh, for all all the 
for all the coefficients. Uh, but uh, there is a caveat in this. Uh, the caveat is that to calculate the coefficients, you only uh, you must have only finite amount of computations to be done. So if the amount of computations that you need to do to calculate the coefficients is not finite, then it, it doesn't make sense to talk about these infinity v polynomials uh, in the setting that we are. So remember that we need the computations to be finite to calculate the coefficients. And in our case, it is finite, so we don't need, really need to bother about them. Uh, right. Uh, so if you are interested in in, uh, in, uh, in learning more about how to think of infinite sums and infinite polynomials, then I recommend that you look at chapter one of, uh, of the very nice book by Richard Stanley called Enumerative Combinatorics. So I think already in the first few pages, you'll, you'll get a nice idea about how to think of infinite, uh, infinite degree polynomials as sums or products or whatever. Right. Um, um, so so let me just briefly tell you what I mean by this uh, formal approach. So what I mean by this formal approach is that I, I think of them as formal power series or, or infinite degree polynomials that I've said. And these will look like something like a k q to the k, where uh, k runs from 0 to infinity. Okay? So this is just a 0 plus a 1 q uh, plus a square q square and so on. Okay, And I need uh, the computation. So uh, so this notation, so I'll, I'll sometimes use this notation uh, uh, of, let's call this uh, capital A of X, A of Q. So if I say Q to the N in uh, square brackets A Q, then uh, this is equal to A of A N. So that means basically the uh, coefficient of Q to the N uh, in this uh, polynomial. So what I need is that uh, to find out this A N, I, I only, uh, I must only have finitely many calculations to be done. So if these calculations are not finite, then uh, it does not make sense to talk about them as uh, infinite degree polynomials. Anyway, um, so in this formal approach, we can actually expand uh, uh, terms like this. So if I have 1 over 1 minus q to the n, then this just becomes 1 plus uh, q to the n plus uh, q to the 2m plus q to the 3m and so on, okay? So this is just the uh, infinite uh, geometric series, uh, sum of geometric series that you are familiar with. And uh, if I were not in the formal approach, then I would have needed this condition. So uh, I'm going to ignore such conditions because I think of them as, as polynomials. Uh, right. Um, so now we have uh, we have the identities and we know how to think of them as uh, infinite sums and infinite products. Uh, let me come to a different uh, object which is of interest, which is the Roger Samanujan continued fraction. Uh, but first, let me start with a simpler continued fraction. So I assume that everyone is familiar with the notion of a continued fraction. Um, so the continued fraction that I want to start with is just the continued fraction which composes of only ones. Okay. So this is the continued fraction that I uh, first one to start with um, and uh, we, 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 we'd we like to iterate we'd like to uh, truncate it in different places and look at the convergence okay so the first convergent is just one uh, if I just truncate it uh, uh, in the first place and this I can just write it as one over one uh, the second convergent would be something like one plus one over one and this is equal to two but I would like to write it as two over one uh, then the third conversion would be uh, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. And uh, this would be 3 over 2 and so on. Okay. So if I calculate the conversions, uh, 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 if I go some more steps, then I'll see that the conversions of these continued fractions looks like something like this. So these three we have already seen. Uh, the next conversion would be 5 over 3. And then we'll have 8 over 5 and so on. So uh, some of you might have identified uh, what this uh, sequence of convergence should be. And uh, if you only uh, look at these values and identify the first sequence that comes to your mind, then you would be right, because these are actually the Fibonacci numbers. Uh, so 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and so on. These are the Fibonacci numbers. Um, anyway, so. Uh, uh, what we can show is that the nth convergent, if we denote the nth convergent as Wn, then this convergent satisfies uh, this nice recurrence, which is Wn is equal to 1 plus 1 over Wn minus 1, where Wn minus 1 is the n minus 1th convergent. Okay, So let's mark this as uh, a star. Uh, 
So, I mean, at some points I might be going too fast. Uh, if, if that happens, then please stop me because I only have half an hour. So, uh, some of the things it might be too, too fast. Anyway, uh, so I have this convergence and um, uh, and, I, and I already told you that this convergence, if you, if you try to look at them, these can be written as uh, the uh, ratios of two Fibonacci numbers. Um, so uh, I mean, uh, from this or or anyway. So if you assume that uh, your nth convergence looks like something like this, f n divided by f n minus one, then using the previous uh, recursion, uh, which was so which was this um, this equation star, then you can actually get to the Fibonacci recurrence. So let's see how this happens. So if I use star here, then I'll have um, fn minus 2 divided by fn minus 1 and this will just give me fn equal to fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2 okay so this is just the fibonacci recurrence uh, so uh, one one exercise might be to show that the convergence uh, that the that wn it converges um to, to a certain fraction and uh, probably you also know what that fraction is anyway so uh, this is an exercise you can probably use the computer to look at some data and see that this converges and and this should uh, give you uh, something to do with the golden mean and so on anyway okay so i i said that i would be talking about the rogers samanujan continuing fraction so this is not the rogers samanujan continuing fraction I need to uh, uh, I need to figure out the Q analog of this uh, nice continued fraction that I showed you, uh, and that will be the Rogers Samanujan continued fraction that I want to talk about. So, what is the Q analog? So, this Q analog is a very important object in uh, in uh, some areas of mathematics. For example, in combinatorics or in the study of partitions, uh, uh, we we sometimes want to study something called the Q analog. So. Uh, I mean, the, basically, the meaning of Q analog is to uh, really assign some weights into the objects that you want to count or that you are studying. Um, there is a very natural way to think of the Q analog, and uh, this would come uh, via uh, inversions of per permutation. So if you uh, look at inversions of permutation, uh, then the concept of Q analog is very natural to, uh, to uh, define. But since I don't have too much time here, so I'm not going to use that approach. I'm just going to tell you what the Q analog of, uh, of a number is. So uh, n, uh, any natural number n, I can write it as a sum of n ones. Then the Q analog of n will be denoted by nq or sometimes just nq if the context is clear. And uh, this will be just one plus uh, q plus q square, and so on up to q to the n minus one. So this is the q analog, and uh, you already know that this is equal to one minus q to the n divided by one minus q. So this is equal to n q. So you can also define the q analog of a factorial. For example, the q analog of n factorial is now just uh, sorry, is now just uh, one. Uh, q 2q and so on up to nq okay and uh, and so on so you can you can actually uh, take the q analog of anything that you would like but sometimes these things might not be meaningful uh, but uh, for example the q analog of a binomial coefficient is called the gaussian binomial coefficient or the q binomial coefficient so for example n choose k the q analog is denoted as uh, this and uh, again you probably would have guessed that the q and log looks like uh, looks like this so uh, for this to be meaningful actually this needs to be a polynomial in q and um, from this definition what i have written here it's not a, it's not uh, really apparent that this is a polynomial in q uh, but it turns out that this is a polynomial in q so that that might be a good exercise also uh, so exercise show that this is a polynomial in q All right. So let's let's try to uh, generalize uh, the uh, the uh, continued fraction that I showed you, which was just composed of all ones. And the Q generalization of this continued fraction would just be adding, uh, would just be multiplying each of the ones with some powers of Q. Okay. So the first one I'm going to multiply with this one. This one I'm going to multiply with a power of 
Q and that power is Q to the zero. So basically I'm not doing anything. So I just leave it as a one. Uh, this one, I'm going to multiply it by a power of Q to the one. So this becomes a one. Uh, then this one, I'm going to multiply it by uh, Q square. So which makes it Q square and then so on. I keep on doing this. So now you, you probably get the idea what the Q generalization of this continued fraction looks like for me, okay? Uh, again, we do the same trick of finding the convergence. So the first convergent is just one. The second convergent is just one plus Q. Uh, the third convergent in this case would be uh, one plus Q plus Q square divided by one plus Q square and so on, okay? So I'm not going to do the calculation. Uh, if you're interested, you can just use the computer to, to check uh, the conversions. Um, so what, uh, like before, uh, in the previous uh, continued fraction, I used uh, uh, I used one conversion uh, uh, to find out the next conversion, okay? So basically I used the n minus one at conversion to figure out what is the nth conversion uh, using that equation star that I showed you. And I would like to do something similar here. So if I have, the n minus one at conversion. If I know what that is, then I would like to say what the n at conversion would be. Okay. Um, so, so basically, uh, what I want to do is something like this. So, if I know, suppose I know something. Uh, so I know I know what this is. So let's say one plus q by one. Then I would like to use this 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 quantity to figure out what uh, the following quantity would be. What the next uh, level of uh, conversion would be basically. Okay. So I would like to figure out what this would be, something like this. Okay. Uh, but, the, but the powers of Q are not really right, you see, because here there is an extra QQ. So we cannot really use that. We need to adjust this by adding some more parameters uh, into the uh, continued fraction. And I'm going to add a new parameter, which will be uh, Z uh, to this. And I'm going to write this uh, continued, I'm going to denote this continued fraction as C of ZQ. Uh, if I add the parameter z, my continued fraction would look like something like this. So everywhere where there is a uh, non-zero power of q, I'm going to multiply it by z. Okay. So the q square becomes z q square, and the q cube becomes z q cube, and so on. Okay. So this is now my uh, new continued fraction where I have two parameters z and q. And if you set z equal to one, equal uh, q equal to one, then you get back the original, just the uh, original continued fraction that I started with. And this is now called the uh, rogers ramanujan continued fraction. And now you can use actually uh, the previous conversion to figure out what the next conversion is. So uh, this will give us actually a very nice uh, recursion. And that recursion is that c of z q is equal to one plus uh, ZQ divided by C of ZQ Q. Okay. So this will be a nice recursion that will be satisfied. And it's it's not very difficult to see. It's just from the uh, definition itself. If you look at what whatever, if you just ignore the one plus ZQ, and if you look at what is below the ZQ, then you'll see that this is actually nothing but C of ZQ Q. Okay. Um, so let's look at some, again, let's look at some of the, uh, sort of convergence in this case. So I'm going to denote it by Cn of uh, Zq. So C0 of Zq would be nothing but one. Uh, C1 of Zq in this case would be uh, one plus Zq. C2 of Zq. So I'm going to write until uh, C4. Uh, and I have already calculated this. So I'm just going to copy it from my notes. Uh, one plus Zq square. And then C3 of ZQ is equal to one plus ZQ, ZQ square, ZQ cube plus Z square Q4 divided by one plus ZQ square plus ZQ cube. Uh, so even from this, actually, the pattern should should already be sort of clear. And the pattern is the following. So so again, we'll use the trick of like writing the uh, conversant as um, as ratio of two different things. So let's write Cn of Zq to be equal to, uh, say, Hn of Zq divided by Hn minus 1 of Zq. So Hn minus 1 of Zq. And uh, this will be equal to one plus ZQ, HN minus two 
zq square uh, q. Sorry, this should be a zq comma q divided by uh, hn minus 1 zq q. Uh, so this is actually true for n equal to 1, 2, and 3. If you look at uh, whatever is written on the left-hand side, then you will see that whatever I have written on the right-hand side would be true for n equal to 1, 2, and 3. Um, and uh, this actually suggests that we can make the following substitution. So again, uh, you can verify this using a computer, uh, which will not take too much time. So this suggests that I can make the following uh, uh, following substitution actually so remember i'm interested in czq not the convergence really uh, but i'm going to use the convergence to say something about uh, about the roger samanujan identities so this suggests that i can uh, write czq as a ratio of h some h zq divided by h of zqq okay uh, so if i use that uh, again i i want to use this uh, use this recursion which i had uh, equation number one czq was equal to one plus zq divided by czqq so if i use it here then this would imply that i have h zq divided by h zqq is equal to uh, one plus zq h z square qq divided by h uh, zqq and if i uh, just uh, divide out uh, hzqq from both sides, then I'll just have hzq, which is equal to hzqq plus zq hz square qq, okay? And this is now my equation two, let's call it. So now I'm going to use a trick, and that trick is that, uh, so basically I want to solve this recursion uh, two, uh, which I got from the recursion one, and we want to use a trick, and this trick actually goes back uh, to the work of Jacobi, Euler, and uh, different people. So, which is to say that the solution, uh, so, I mean, it's 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 already apparent because we are dealing with HZQ is basically a polynomial in Z and Q. So, uh, it's natural to uh, assume that this polynomial would be a power series in Z and Q. Uh, so, I'm just going to write this as a polynomial in Z, okay? So, what I'm going to do is, let's assume that H of ZQ is equal to um, some a k z k where i have suppressed the q the q is now inside the a k okay so i'm going to assume that something like this happens and if i put this uh, h z q whatever i have written as a sum if i put this in equation two then i can just compare the coefficient of z to the power k on both sides and i can get the following so i'm not going to do that step i'm just going to directly compare the coefficient of z to the power k so what i'm going to do is i'm going to compare uh, coefficients of z to the power k on both sides of 2. And if I do that, I will get a very nice uh, relation. And that relation is that a k will be equal to a k q to the power k plus a k minus 1 q to the power 2 k minus 1. And this just implies that a k is equal to q to the power 2 k minus 1 uh, divided by 1 minus q to the power k, a k minus 1. Now, this is a very nice recursion again, where this is just a uh, one-term recursion. So I can just keep on reiterating this, uh, replacing a k minus 1 by the next level of recurrence, where I'll replace a k minus 1 by a k minus 2, and so on. And if I keep on doing this, then eventually I'll see that a k is equal to q raised to the power k square divided by uh, this product. 1 minus q to the power i, where i is going from 1 to k, okay, a0. So this is what I have. Now, this should already be familiar. So q, q to the power k square divided by this product is actually the terms of the first Roger Zamanujan identity on the sum side. So what, basic, what this basically says is that h of, sorry, so I'm just coming to the end. Uh, so what this basically says is that h of zq is now just this sum. Uh, so the sum is going from k equal to 0 to infinity. Uh, q to the power k square divided by this product 1 minus to the i. i is going from 1 to k, uh, zk. Okay. So now this, this part is actually the sum side of the first Roger Samanujan identity. Right. 
So what we are interested in is now C1Q, which is equal to H1Q divided by HQQ. Okay. So this was the definition that I took of CZQ. So in Z, I'm going to replace Z by 1. So if I replace Z by 1, then uh, H1Q is exactly the sum side of the first Roger Samanujan identity, and HQQ will be the sum side of the second Roger Samanujan identity. So what this will give is that now I have Q square by sum 1 minus Q to the I divided by the sum Q K square plus K divided by product 1 minus Q to the I, where I goes from 1 to K, similarly I goes from 1 to K, and K goes from 0 to infinity. So the Rogers Ramanujan continued fraction at the point at the value z equal to 1 gives me the ratio of the sum sides of the two Rogers Ramanujan identities. Uh, now, how to get so so far I have got the sum side. So, how to get the product side? Um, so, the product side again, we are going to use a trick, and this trick is very short now. I don't really need to do so much of details. So, in the next one minute or two minutes, I would like to show you how to get the product side. Uh, so, let's focus on H1Q. Okay. So, H1Q, if you just expand it from whatever we have seen before, it will be something like 1 plus Q by 1 over uh, by Q. Uh, 1 plus q by 1 plus 1 minus q plus q to the 4 by 1 minus q times 1 minus q square and so on okay so this is just the sum side of the Rosas Amanjan identity uh, and this if you just expand it using the uh, using the power series expansion that I showed you so just recall that what I said was that this power series is now 1 plus q to the m plus q to the 2m and so on okay so if I use this then this expansion would be something like 1 plus q plus higher powers of q, okay? So whatever will be uh, remaining would be just higher powers of q, okay? So I want to eliminate, uh, I want to eliminate the smallest power of q on the right hand side. So to do that, I will just multiply uh, both sides by 1 minus q. So what this implies is that 1 minus q h 1 q is now just 1 plus Q to the 4 divided by 1 minus Q square and so on. Okay, so this is what I get. Again, if I expand this, this will just be 1 plus Q to the 4 plus higher powers of Q. So again, I would like to eliminate the smallest power of Q from the right hand side. And to do that, again, I need to multiply something on both sides. And this multiplication would exactly be 1 minus Q square this time. Okay, so this implies that 1 minus q times 1 minus q square h1q is now just 1 plus uh, q to the 6 plus higher powers of q this time. Okay, and so on. So now again the pattern should be clear. To go to the next level to eliminate q to the 6, I would like to multiply both sides by 1 minus q cube and so on. Okay, so if I keep on doing this continuously, then eventually what I'll get is that 1 minus q times 1 minus q square and so on, okay? Uh, so let's write the h1q in the beginning. So this will just be 1 because I would have eliminated all the powers of q, all the small powers, smallest powers of q from the right hand side and I'll just be left with q to the 0 which is 1. So what this says is that h1q is actually... 1 over this infinite product 1 minus q 1 minus q square and so on okay so next time i would have i would multiply by 1 minus q to the 4 and so on so 1 minus q 1 minus q square 1 minus q to the 4 and so on sorry so what i have now uh, here is the product side of the rosas amanujan identity at least the one, the first Rogers Samanujan identity. To get the next Rogers Samanujan identity, I would like to do the same trick, but this time instead of doing it with H1Q, I want to do it with HQQ. Okay. And this I leave it as an exercise. So HQQ, do the same trick to get the second Rogers Samanujan identity. So 
so this is how uh, one might actually discover the Roger Samanujan identities. This is not a proof because uh, I have not done, uh, I have not shown that actually both the sides are equal. Uh, the proof is again not too difficult if you know a little bit of the techniques in Q-series, uh, but uh, it will take about 15-20 minutes to do the proof of one identity, so I'm not going to do that. So just to recall uh, what, what we did uh, in, in the last say 30 seconds, and then I'll stop. So just to recall, uh, first what we did was we gave a Q generalization of the continued fraction for the golden mean uh, for these ratios of where the convergence where the ratios of Fibonacci numbers. Uh, and uh, this Q generalization, again, we added a parameter Z, which gave us the Roger Samanujan continued fraction. Um, next, uh, uh, an analysis of this Roger Samanujan continued fraction gave us the sum sides of the two Roger Samanujan identities. Then we used uh, this trick of eliminating all the smaller powers of Q, uh, which goes back to Euler, to get the product sides of the Rosa Samanujan identities. And uh, this is how one might actually discover that uh, is some, uh, the sum side and the product side of the Rosa Samanujan identities. And uh, I mean, it's not clear that this is how uh, Ramanujan discovered it, but this is one way of doing it. Uh, so uh, yeah, so I would like to end here. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Dr. Sekia, for this wonderful talk. Uh, I hope all the participants learned a lot from this beautiful talk. Now I would request the participants to ask questions if they have any. Um, yeah, so I forgot to mention it in the beginning. Uh, so this is not the first time that I'm giving this talk. So I, had, I have given this talk before. And if you're interested, uh, so the, I have given a longer version of this talk where I also explain some of the combinatorial significance of uh, the Roger Samanujan identities. So if you're interested, you can just go and uh, search on YouTube and I think it will just come up. So that is a long talk. It's about one and a half hour. Okay, so it seems that... Uh, Hello. Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Hi. Hi, Manjit. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. How yes, are you? sir. I'm good. Nice okay. to see you. Okay. Manzil, can you suggest some text? Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, so there is a book uh, by Andrew Sills called An Invitation to the Roger Samanujan Identities. It's a very nice book. So uh, the first uh, two chapters deals with introduction to uh, the Roger Samanujan identity with proofs and combinatorial interpretations. Uh, I think that is a that is a good book to, to look in. Okay. What a book, students. And your sales. Okay. So let's thank Manzil for his beautiful and uh, brief presentation. Made uh, it's an interesting topic. So simple to all of us. Uh, so thank you, uh, Manzil Pratim Sege, for giving uh, this much of time. And of course, uh, you are a part of this university all the time. Thank you, sir. I would like 